Welcome back, everybody. Joe Everest, the fence expert. Hey, one of the most common pieces of feedback we get about the Saturday morning live Ask the Experts segment is those things are long, and they're not wrong. They last about three hours, two and a half to three hours. Sometimes, a few weeks ago, Caleb and I got into a pretty good discussion about marketing. I think it lasted closer to four hours. Nobody's got time to sit through four hours of listening to a couple experts talk. I get it. So Jeremy's created a new segment just for you guys called Hot Takes. It's usually a shorter segment of the longer conversation, basically hitting the hot topics, if you will, of that live segment. So without further ado, here comes this week's hot take. Stephen Eastup says, okay, with all the wisdom here, when do you guys believe is the right time to hire? Everyone I talk, everyone I talk to about it, 90% say stay small as long as you can. What's your guys' opinion? So can, I think I go, is, can I go first on that one? Absolutely, 100%. I think when people tell you to go to stay small, it's because they've stayed small and they're afraid. They want to put their their fears on top of you. I think I think every person I've ever hired, especially the last couple, I've been. I can't afford this person. There, I mean, these because I'm paying people. We're paying people now, and um, it's the best thing I've ever done. Every time I do one, because you're paying people to do a job, and you're paying them a great price. And they start executing for you. They start knocking stuff out of the park. When we're doing our all our day off training or whatever, and everybody's in the house, in the shop here in, in the office, and a in a semi truck honks the horn out. He's got a 15 people get up and run out the door. They're fighting over who gets to unload it. And we got people that are checking emails on the weekends. I mean, it's like a our team's doing this now. And, and they're all taking ownership. So I think if you can if you can keep culture a priority. Um, pay them well, hire people, do it. If you want to grow, if you don't, if you don't want to scale, then don't do it. But if you want to scale, you, you got to have people. Agreed. Agreed. Sean, what do, you think? Sean, what do you think? So I say, don't pass up the opportunity, right? So I get people message me all the time. Hey, are you hiring? Absolutely. Do we need, I'm, I'm actually, um, Full disclosure, we have more people than we need in our team right now. We are completely heavy. Every one of our teams has an extra guy in the field. We got an extra person in the office. Our shop has two extra people. Like We're blessed that we have more team members than we've ever had. We have more than we need. And I, think, I think that's because the culture is attracted to other people. But I haven't said no because if somebody comes to me and it's an opportunity, like it's a great fit, yeah. I'm going to pass that up. We're going to find a spot to get through because we're going to need them to grow. But if you're just hiring people to put bodies in there, I'm not a proponent of just hiring to put bodies. But no. if somebody comes to you that fits your culture and fits well, like don't lose that opportunity because they won't. They may yeah. not be there next month or next year when you need them. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's a good mentality, Sean. Is because when you hire someone because you need a body, you're willing to sacrifice. Yeah, right. Yeah. You you make concessions. He's like, well. He was a bit abrasive, and he didn't really fit the job description that well. But he says he'll show up on time almost every day, so he he wins. Yeah, that every one of things is then it shows the team that you have that that's the standard. All of a sudden, right? Yeah. So if you've got if you've got the A team out there on the line out there on the job. And then they, you start filling their team with B players and C players. A, A players don't want that. They're like, no. that is not what we're about. I'm not going to try to pick up this guy's slack. I'm here to do work. Yeah. Right. So I think even the way I try to think about it is, from, Sean, to your point, like, even if you need somebody, come at it with the mentality, like, I don't really need them, but can they persuade me to hire them? Right. Is, are they an A plus at this? Are they A plus at that? Like, yeah. is there a compelling reason to hire them? If so, bring them on in. But if they're like, eh, I don't know, we'll find a know. spot. We'll find a spot to put them on the team if they're right. a great team member. Oh, absolutely. No, no, yeah. I'm not saying, hey, I got 15 years of fence experience. Will you hire me? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, no, that's not that's not what we're looking for. I'm not. You know, it's cool if it's great. I mean, it could be a benefit. However, we're going to start with the conversation. Do you fit our team and culture? One yep. attitude, yep. to, you're right? A liability. Yeah. That's key. That's, That's the, the key. thing is, and I don't know where I heard this, and it might have been here, probably. Uh, but like, I can teach someone to build fence all day. I cannot teach someone to be a good person all day. 
Well, you can't well, one, train that. One other thing I think is important. I don't know what your experience is for you guys, but everyone that we've hired has come from employment. Nobody, we're not hiring people that aren't working. Everyone have had jobs in a lot of had a job. I like it. Yeah. Have had jobs that I thought. I mean, we've had some people that took pretty good pay cuts to come here. And of course, they're back up now. But they they were like, hey, look, one guy, he was taking a $150 a day pay cut to come to work for us. And he did it. And now he's he's a sales guy and he's crushing it. Yeah. Um, another thing is, is when you got those A players, you get people who are, are driving the ball forward. Like the other day, one of our crews, we had a guy that sort of he didn't black out, but he just got overheated. He had to come in. I before I even knew what was going on, I had two sales guys in my office who jumped in a truck. They went and stained a fence and they're not even stainers. They just went and handled it with uh, just the team. Yeah. It just did it, you know, yeah. and, and it's, it's beautiful when you have that kind of culture where everybody wants to, everybody, we're all going to the top. And yeah. so I think you hire people that are already working, hire people that are winners. Don't say, well, this guy's a crackhead, but I can get him for 90 bucks a day. You know, exactly. Get this guy will come to work for eleven dollars an hour or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Get the, get the yeah. people that you don't think you can afford, and you got to use discernment with it because there's some people that you can't afford them no matter what they cost, whether it's eleven dollars an hour or hundred and eleven dollars an hour. But, um, but get people that are going to take care of you. Most of those people are already working. Yeah, I, and and so to to bring this back around to scaling, you. Know, oh, I think the first time that you think about scaling is when you should start planning on it. Yeah. At, the, at that first moment, we're like, you know what? I wonder, like, should we grow a bit? That's exactly when you start planning for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if it terrifies you, then that's probably not for you. Right. But the minute you start to wonder, like the minute that thought enters your mind, Stephen, the fact that you're asking this question, you should start planning for it. Right. And, Know that you don't want to do it tomorrow, but if you plan for it today and you know that's the goal, the next time someone walks through your door or you bump into them at a hardware store or whatever, and they say, you know, hey, are you guys hiring? Like, you know what? That is actually part of the plan. We do need someone with your skill set, you know, or you start asking, hey, who do I know that is rock star at operations? Because I need an operator, you know, or I need somebody to run the operations. The minute you start planning for it, you know who you're going to need to put in what spot so that when they come across your path, you know it's time to bring them on. Well, and you also have to understand and accept that there's going to be days that you don't make money with your hourly, with your people. There's going to be right. times you're not running billable hours. It's an investment. You accept that. that yeah. Is an well, yeah, yeah, your overhead's going to outweigh your income. Yeah, right. it's going to happen. It, I mean, yeah. it's just it's going to happen. And then there's going to be what days you do very well. So, yeah. you know, that's that's the way it goes. But uh, if I, you know, being if I was I'm not going to give direct advice, but I'm going to say something. If I could go back and I was an owner operator and I was hiring my first people, I would know that I'm going to have downtime. I'm going to have rainy days. So I would just address it up front and say, hey, instead of sending you guys home on rainy days or whatever, we're going to we're going to. You're going to work, but you're going to go hit neighborhoods. You're going to cold call. You're going to knock on doors. You're going to make phone calls to previous customers and ask how things were doing. And that would propel you forward much faster than just sending them home, even though it costs more money. Yeah. It's going to make you money. So, hey, part of your job description is staining fences. It's cleaning fences. It's also putting brochures and door hangers out. And it's also calling all your past customers. It's writing thank you letters. I got some laying around here. And if you just make a list of those things, you'll find things to do in that time. And you're going to build a customer service minded team rather than, oh, we don't have anything to do. I'm just going to go home. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I would do if I were to go back to that point and uh, start over. I like it. All right, guys, that concludes this week's hot take. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you like the format? Do you not like the format? Let me know in the comments below. We're still figuring this out and we could use your help. But for now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.